There are secrets that your cloud provider will never tell you. Let's talk about five of them. Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel, here to learn about the realities of cloud computing and generative AI. I'm your host, Dave Lindcom, author, speaker, B-List Geek. Let's get started. So first and foremost, cloud providers do keep secrets, um, and it's because they're a business and they're not going to uh, tell you everything that's associated with things that are normally going to be negatively received by you, the cloud consumer. Uh, but they're out there, and I think it's good that we kind of go through them and and uh, know how they work. Also, keep in mind that you need to consider this when you do your cloud computing architecture and define your cloud computing solutions. Even with working with uh, cloud consulting companies, you're ultimately going to um, have to understand the essence of what the hidden agendas are with these cloud providers to make sure you're making educated decisions. And that's, that's what this all is all about. Also, this uh, has a tendency to be raised up with some consequences. There are some bullying to the press and analysts and influencers uh, who are talking about these secrets. Not as much these days, but back in the day when I used to raise them, I did get some pushback uh, about talking about them in public and talking about them on uh, my blogs and talking about them on podcasts. So let's figure out what those are. So secret number one, uptime guarantees are not absolute. Cloud providers often advertise high uptime guarantees, but these come in the, with fine print. The advertised service level agreements or SLAs usually, usually cover specific aspects and frequently have exclusions for outages caused by third-party applications. Uh, network issues are unusual, other unusual events. Understanding the nuances of these SLAs is critical uh, for the real-world uptime that you're going to get may differ from what the cloud providers are advertising. Um, people will find this out with experience. So as people lever are leveraging public cloud providers, they are getting SLA documents that come with those agreements, but they're finding that there's a lot of fine print in those agreements in terms of what uptime really means. And so the uptime guarantees that you see or the SLAs from the cloud providers are not cast in stone. And you're going to find there's lots of uh, loopholes that they can fall into with uh, networks going out, uh, internet issues, things like that. And sometimes it's things that are not their fault that they shouldn't get blamed for. But in some instances, it's things that are under their control that may have an outage, which may cause an SLA issue. And those aren't typically revealed to you uh, explicitly. They're in the fine print of the agreements that you're signing. So keep that in mind. So secret two, the hidden cost in data storage. While cloud storage costs are often presented as being inexpensive, hidden costs can emerge. These include storage access fees, retrieval data scanning, long-term storage management charges, egress fees, frequent, frequent access, access to data, or high data retrieval rates can lead to unexpected high bills that come from your cloud provider. So knowing how storage and retrieval fees are calculated will allow you to budget better. So leveraging FinOps tools, things like that, but really have a good understanding of what you're gonna be paying for in terms of cloud storage. In other words, what storage systems are you gonna use? It can be object, block, file storage, things like that. Different fees associated with that. What are they charging for cloud egress fees? What are they charging for data transfer fees? Whether that's intra-cloud or inter-cloud. Uh, all those things need, really need to be understood. One of the reasons we have run into the high cost of cloud computing lately is because I don't think these storage fees were well understood. And so enterprises overspent in these areas because they were spending money on storage systems that were coming up to be way more expensive than they initially thought they would be. And obviously, FinOps is going to get us some better control and better governance in those situations. But you got to be very aware of what you're paying for storage including the hidden costs of data storage. Keep those in mind. So secret three, non-native resources may be better. So cloud providers obviously sell their native solutions such as databases, cloud operations systems, security systems, things like that, that are branded by them. So, and the public cloud providers do that because normally they make money on selling those systems within their cloud providers. But in many instances, Systems that are not necessarily branded by your particular cloud provider 
uh, will work better and provide you more value. Certainly, if you're going to leverage a multi-cloud solution where you're leveraging uh, different cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft, and Google, and therefore it is going to be advantageous for you to have a non-native system, such as a database or a security system, that's able to operate across those systems. So that's often left off the table. And many times I've noticed that when cloud architects are doing cloud solutions around particular cloud providers, certainly the ones that are working for those cloud providers, they come up with these very homogenous branded solutions where everything is either AWS, everything is Microsoft, or everything is Google. And that's not necessarily the most optimized way to do those architectures. So be aware of that. So secret four, not all services scale equally. While cloud providers really promote the scalability of their services, it's essential to know that not all services scale in a uniform way. Some services, particularly those that are newer and more specialized, have scaling limitations that are very difficult for you to understand unless you try them. So they're not apparent. They're not something you can really understand without testing those services. So this can lead to performance bottlenecks, unexpected downtime, demand spikes, things like that. And so the idea that a database running on a particular cloud system and a storage system running on, on a particular cloud system and an application stack running on a particular cloud system are going to scale in the same manner in the same ways is just not based in reality. They're going to scale, scale differently in unequal ways. And therefore, we need to figure that out in our performance expectations and our performance modeling to understand what the performance impact is going to be of adding additional users, adding additional data. So while this you know, seems like an architectural reality that most people should understand, many people who approach uh, cloud-based systems believe and certainly model that all of these things will scale in an equal way with the same patterns. That's not the case. Keep that in mind. Secret five, security should be systemic. Cloud providers often focus on accelerating workload migration to their platform, sometimes recommending quick native security solutions for individual applications. In other words, they're, they're selling very much like the native solutions we just talked about. They're se selling native security solutions that are specific to those cloud providers. Uh, the problem with that is normally they only work within those cloud providers. So if you're leveraging a heterogeneous system, you're leveraging a hybrid uh, cloud model, you're leveraging a multi-cloud model, those systems normally can't extend uh, to those other cloud environments. They're not heterogeneous. It doesn't make sense that uh, AWS security is going to support uh, the, all of the other cloud providers. And likewise with Microsoft and likewise with Google, that just makes sense. So this can lead to fragmented security architectures that are difficult to manage. In other words, we're leveraging security silos on each particular public cloud provider, which adds complexity, which, as you know, complexity leads to security issues. So... In many cases, by leveraging these cloud-native security solutions that are siloed on each particular cloud provider uh, as really kind of the path or least resistance for on each of these cloud providers, we're going to end up with a security solution that's going to be much less effective than some sort of homogenous solution that's able to span the clouds and even span the on-premise systems. That's going to be much more difficult to, to architect and implement, but there are solutions out there that we need to look into. So keep in mind, security should be systemic to everything, and we should try to build security around holistic uh, solutions, not necessarily siloed solutions. Well, shorter video this week, but I think it was effective. I hope you learned something. You have to remember that there's lots of things that are secrets that are a little bit more difficult to understand in terms of how we're leveraging our cloud computing providers and the, the realities around this technology. And I'm here to tell you about what those realities are. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, follow, follow me on LinkedIn and follow me on X. Also, check out my courses out on LinkedIn Learning, my InfoWorld blog, my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, and I have that uh, generative AI course out on Go Cloud Careers. Check that out. We're having a lot of fun over there walking through, uh, through that learning process. Until, until next time, you guys be safe. Cheers.